Micah chapter number 2, utter destruction. God is very serious about sin. When it comes to his people and the sins that they do, there, there's no love. Woe to them that devise iniquity. There are people out there who dream, desire, occupy themselves to do sin and work evil upon their beds. Dreaming. I had a dream. Yeah, I wonder what your dream was, buddy, from the fruits of it. You know, missiles, bombs, grenades, the guillotine, all those had to be thought of by a man at some point in his time. Now, is it a sin? You have a dream, and your dream, whoever it is, you kill them in your dream. And, you know, you just have one of those dreams. You devise this thing that kills a bunch of people. You are in your dream. You're driving a car and you hit somebody and you die. And they die. Is that a sin? Woe to them to devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Sometimes you're going to have a bad dream. Sometimes you're going to have a dream that's going to seem like it's sin. When the morning is light, they practice it. So it's no longer a dream. It's put into action. It becomes a verb. Now it's sin. And this is probably much more than a dream in verse 1. They're probably sleepless, thinking upon their bed, drawing blueprints, making notes, waiting. Who in the Bible can you find a character such as this? Haman. You realize that one night he kept the city awake, building his gallows? Man, he thought... How can I get rid of Haman? How can I get... I'm going to build me gallows. And he builds them in the middle of the night. So by morning light, there's a gallows. Now he's running to the king. Because it is in the power of their hand. Psalms chapter 4 verse 4. Proverbs 5 27. Genesis 31 29. You know what the problem with some people who dream of distorting other people's lives, if I can say it like that? They don't have the power, they don't have the guts to go through it. Some people may be, hey, they got this, you know what, I'm a Christian, I believe the Bible, I'm going to put that under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm not going no further. Just even thinking about that was sin. What do you do to somebody who's lost? You realize if everybody had the power to do what they think, this world would be uh, this world is heading to utter chaos. You realize that children who are playing video games and watching violence are now thinking, "Hey, I can go to the schoolyard and I can do this with my friends. I can do this in, uh, in amongst cops." I can go destroy cities, and they are practicing it. It's no longer a video game. It's no longer on the TV screen. It's real life. And there's more. And we're running into, since we're in the political season, we're running into something here that you need to be aware of. 
Here are people that they got a think tank in their in their bedroom. They're thinking about how to deceive the people. They're thinking about how to destroy the people, and they practice it and they covet fields. Government. We'll come up with a thing called eminent domain. We'll come up with a thing called communism. We'll come up with a thing of social socialism. We'll come up with a thing with taxation. Anything to get what I want. Ahab wanted a little field for herbs, a garden. Jezebel uses death in capital punishment to get that land. They covered the fields. Anything wrong with covering fields? Well, that is the Tenth Commandment. That's a sin. Jesus said, whosoever looks upon a woman to lust after in his heart has already committed adultery in his heart. So I guess the thought practice in verse 1 is also a sin. Some of our dreams that we have or those thoughts daydreaming or night dreaming, whatever it is when we don't sleep. Some of those thoughts need to be put under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and need to be stopped. Do you ever think about that, Christian? Do you ever think that some of your dreams need to be put in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you don't, they're going to appear at the judgment seat of Christ? The Bible says in Matthew, aren't we going to give account for every idle word that we speak? What about every idle thought? What about every intention? What about everything that we think of in this head, whether day or night? They covet fields. That's against the Tenth Commandment. And they take them by violence. That's how God describes the land just before he calls Noah. He says the, the earth is just filled with violence and that's all they're going to do. And he cast upon the earth 40 days of rain and 40 nights of rain that had never happened before. And God says they're doing it just to get land. And that's been going on through the ages of A.D. and B.C. People have lost their lands by violence of somebody else. That's how wars begin. I want this land. No, I want this land. No, I want this. And then you got troops. You get a guy who comes in through someone's window to get your property. Sometimes they kill. Proverbs chapter 1. Come, come join us. Let's go in one purse. We're going to go kill this guy and take all his stuff. Micah chapter 2 is against Americanism. It's against the world. It's against violence. That is happening today. And take them away. Wait a minute. They covet fields, they take them by violence, and houses, and take them away. They remove the people. Or the fields or houses. Or both. They are occupying something that they don't need to occupy. That was already occupied. By violence. So they oppress a man in his house. Taxes. Eminent domain. Pressure. Laws. Even a man and his heritage. Government. My great grandpa had this house. Great grandpa had this house. Great great grandpa. Great great grandpa. Great, great grandpa came over from the old land to this land. I don't care. It's the government. We're going to build a highway here. Well, can't you move the... No. We are going to do what we're going to do, and we're going to do it right through your property. You ever wonder or ask yourself, when you travel to a particular place that you go all the time, work, a grocery store, church, you ever ask yourself... Whose property you are driving on that the government stole?
Therefore, thus saith the Lord. The Lord steps in. The Lord has something to say. Not just Micah. God stepped in and said, Behold, against this family, Jeremiah 8, 3, do I devise an evil from which he shall not remove your necks, neither shall ye go hotly, it's, you know, haunt, high, for this time is evil. God says, this family. So there's a particular family present in Micah. Listen, they're doing it. For which ye shall not remove your necks. Yoke, physically removing heads. For this time is evil. And you know someone walk up the mic. It's not that bad. We all got to get, get, get together. It's really nice. You're just a, a mean, nasty man. It's very intolerant. You just don't have love. You just, you want to say it? Daddy. Daddy. You don't know what you're doing. Matthew 11. This is the second time that God has spoken against violence so far. You know what happens if you keep letting your country go into violence, more violence? Listen, it says right on the television when you got the TV program, may contain violence. You are advertising yourself to God. <laughs> Come on down, get ready. Violence is in the Bible. And when violence happens, God steps down. God starts speaking, not for good. In that day shall one take up a parable against you. So here's a parable. And lament with a doleful lamentation. That's great sorrow, grief. Another lamentation in the Bible outside Jeremiah's lamentation. And say, Lamentation would be a Bible, your biblical country western song. That a guy has lost his pickup truck, his six pack, and his wife, and his dog. And his trailer. And some people just got upset there, but we be utterly spoiled. Spoil is when another occupation, another army, Another group of people have come in and taken everything you've gotten by force. That spoil in the Bible is when an army comes in and they win and they go take refuge of everything that they can find. So it's a military occupation. He has changed the portion of my people. Oh, they had the land. They lose the land. How has he removed it from me? Turning away, he has divided our fields. James 5, 1. Therefore thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by lot in the congregation of the Lord. Now cast a cord by lot, that's some kind of uh, I don't want to say gambling, that's some kind of, you know, pick the straws, pick the black ball. The longest straw wins, the shortest straw. Prophesied ye not. That's what people want you to know. Don't prophesy, don't tell us about hell. Don't tell us about the death. Don't tell us about the Bible. Say they to them that prophesy, they shall not prophesy to them, that they shall not take shame. Isaiah 30, 10, Jeremiah 11, 21, Amos 2, 12, Micah 2, 6, Amos 7, 13. Prophesy ye not. Don't prophesy. Say to them that prophesy, they shall not prophesy to them. 
that they shall not take shame. There's somebody prophesying who should not be prophesying. They're put to shame. They're put to silence. That happened all through Jeremiah. Jeremiah stand up. This is what the Lord says. Some idiots say, no, you don't need to worry about Babylon. We're going, they're going to be friends with us. Everything's going to be hunky-dory. Just eat Jesus Christ and drink his blood and you'll get some time in purgatory. Sell these magazines. Just love one another and grab a Pepsi and sing a song and everything will be so well. Just don't listen to that loud mouth over there. He has no idea what he's doing. And it's a shame that he has his little girl and his wife doing that kind of stuff like that. That's just so tacky. tacky. And if you want to know about the tacky, you check out last Saturday's video at the at the farmer's market preaching about a guy, if I can lightly say that, calling us tacky. Oh, thou that are named the house of Jacob. Name the twelve tribes. Is the spirit of the Lord straightened? The question. Are these his doings? Are these the spirit of God's doings? Let me ask you something, Christian. What you doing? What you're doing in your life presently, is that what God's doing? Is it God approved? Do not my words, ooh, words, do good to him that walketh uprightly. Hey, listen, if you were doing right, why are you so miserable? Doesn't John 1, 1 say that Jesus Christ is the word, right? He came on his own, his own received him not. If the children of Israel were doing so great in the time of Jesus, when he walked and breathed on this planet, why did he have to do healing? Why did he have to cast out devils if they were doing good? That violates Leviticus when they said, hey, listen, if you do right, I'm going to bless you this. I'm going to bless your store. I'm going to bless your animals. I'm going to bless your fruit of your womb. I'm going to bless your crops. I'm going to take care of you. And when Jesus showed up, they are in a total ruined mess. And they have no king, but they have a Gentile government ruled over them that they're so stupid. We'll have no king rule over us. No one is authority over us. Uh, then why would you have to go ask Pilate? To get rid of this one man. You're so out of condition. You don't even know what condition you're in. Even of late. My people is risen up as an enemy. He pulled off the robe. With the garment from them that passed by securely. As men averse from war. You guys become a bunch of soldiers. Rise up as an enemy. Not for me, but against me. You become soldiers of Satan. We are doing conflict against each other not for each other the women of my people have ye cast out from their pleasant houses and that goes back to verse 2 you're getting rid of the women you're getting rid of your wives you're, you're taking them out of the houses you're putting them in the workplace they're out there working jackhammers just as much as their guy. They're out there welding. They're out there building ships. They're out there making cars. They're out there in the business world. They're not home. They're not making dinner. They're not cleaning clothes. It's stuff with a microwave. Stop at the restaurant. 
You know, many years have I been knocking on doors with churches and what. You know, it's amazing how many, what, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Here's this house. It's full. You look in the windows and you can knock on that door anytime and no one is ever home. I'm surprised soap operas are still making business. Because you can come at 2 o'clock in the afternoon when the days of the, the graveyard are on and there's no one there because she's out making a living. And we're not done talking about the women. For their children have ye taken away my glory forever. Now the children are gone. They're at the soccer field instead of being at church. They're there with electronics instead of having a Bible. They're out dating instead of passing out tracts. They're learning words like groovy and whatever words they use today and LOL and all that, but they don't know God. They can't even say God. They got a, whatever that expression is for God. Oh my God. They can't say, oh my God, OMG. If they are in church, it's a perverted church of Satan. For, from their children have they taken away my glory. Children are a gift of God. Children are a heritage of the Lord. And you have handed them over to Satan. Here, take care of them. You have handed them over to the public school system. Instead of you. Mothers should be home training her children, not having teachers. The only teachers in the Bible are those that teach the family the Bible. But we got to have a career at the suffering of the family. Arise. you got to be sitting. you got to be laying down. Couch potato. Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest. Oh, someone's sleeping. Someone's sitting down. Someone's playing video games. Because it is polluted. Oh, there's, there's pollution. The children of God are polluted. How are you going to clean up the act? Repent and get right. No, let's worry about the polar bears. Let's worry about the air. It shall destroy you. Your pollution will dest pollution destroys. Yes. Your sins will destroy you. Even with a sore destruction. Here comes the Assyrians. Here comes Babylon. Utter destruction. But we saved a spotted owl. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee, and we just talked about verse 6 prophesy ye not, say to them that prophesy, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and strong drink. He shall even be the prophet of this people. Is that not 2016? Come on, listen, I grew up. Come on up, eat Jesus, and get a get a booch of hooch. And when I was part of that church, never did the priest ask me for ID. And it's hooch. I will prophesy of wine and strong drink. You know, that's going on. When I tried to start a church in Norwich, Connecticut, and I was looking at all the information, one of the things I had to look up was insurance. I never did get it started, but insurance was one of the things I had to look up. They told me, you got to look at insurance. So I sent off all these church places. And, and you know what all those policies had, in, had involved in insurance that I had to pay, if I was going to get, I had to pay for? Alcohol. So I called them up, one company, and I said, hi, uh, my name is Tyler Averitt. I'm trying to start uh, 
the uh, Guiding Light Bible Baptist Church, and I'm interested in your church, but what's this thing with the alcohol? You see, in our church, we'll have grape juice. We don't have alcohol. And the guy said, really respectfully, he said, you know, it causes in there. So when you have a party at the church, a fellowship, and if somebody gets involved with a DUI from your fellowship, your church will be, what, what, wait a minute, what? You're telling me that there's an insurance for a DUI after a fellowship at the church? Yeah. That's interesting. Because there is drinking going on in churches today. Especially churches that deal with the teenage, the young adults. It's Jesus time. And you know who flocks to those churches? Micah 2.11. I wish they had talked about prosperity and money because I hit the other side of the mega churches, but that's just the alcohol. The guy who says from the pulpit with a Bible in his hand, it's okay to drink and get drunk. Yay, man, all right. And to show you, we're going to have a fellowship drinking party with movies Friday night and dancing girls. Oh, right. Amen. Glory to God. And stand at the great white throne judgment and find your name is not written in the book of life. Oh, we can't stand that one too long, can we? I will surely assemble old Jacob. All of thee. The United Assembly of Israel. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. Now, do you see all the judgments? Verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I am not done with them. I love them. I'm going to gather them. I'm going to gather them all. I'm going to collect them. And you're going to say as a, as a religion, God's all finished with the Jew? If that's the case, Michael, you're a liar. And I, if that is true, I will go up to Micah in glory and say, Michael, you're a liar. How dare you write that God is going to do this to Israel when God's all finished with Israel? It's been book after book after book after book. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and uh, Lamentations have all written God is not and has never will be finished with the Jew. So Micah must be right and religions must be wrong. Those idiots in Utah claim the promises of Israel, but... To the church. Because after all. All the Indians had Hebrew names. We come from. Ephraim. Jehovah Witnesses. We are the 144,000. 1,520. 1,521. 1, 1,522. 1, uh, we're here. We're going to tell the whole world. During the tribulation period. Yay. Looking for the tribulation period. We're going to. You're a liar. Roman Catholic Church, this is our land. This is where Jesus died. Take our holy walk through Jerusalem. And this is our land. We fought the Jews. We fought the Muslims. We're going to take it in the name of Jesus Christ, the land. The Muslims. We read today in 2 Samuel, they butchered this guy's head off. They took this guy's head off and threw it over the wall. They fought these battles. They slayed blood. Do you see where Allah got it? He got it from the Old Testament. Taking a kingdom. Taking a land. That's Israel. That's not the church. My victory is telling lost souls about Jesus Christ. And them coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Savior. As the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not the blood of men. All these religions take the land grant kingdom promise from the nation of Israel. And they are liars. You tell them I said that. I will surely. The new earth belongs to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes of Israel. You know what religion gets? They get the lake of fire. 
I will surely assemble old Jacob. Oh, assemble. United Assembly. United Nuts Assembly. They stole the name to get the world. That belongs to Israel. This land is our land. This land is your land. You're full of baloney. It's God's land. It's God's world. He made it. Right now, Satan's in charge of it. You take it. Go ahead. You have Satan's power. You let Satan deceive you. You let Satan give you a disease. You let Satan charge you for medication. You, I'll have the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. But the land belongs to Israel. Assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. Doesn't sound like he's done with them. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra. Where do you find that? John chapter 10. And what do you see with John chapter 10? You see Jesus holding in a window frame of colored glass. Jesus holding a lamb. It's the great church of the whore with the Pope on the robe, the idiot that wears the, the Dagon hat. That's us. No, Bible says that sheep is Israel. Right there. Name in chapter 2. John chapter 10. Those sheep are Israel. And the shepherd will gather them. Not the Pope, the Lord Jesus Christ. You take the Pope and go take, tell him to go tell a swan dive into the lake of fire. Except he believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as the flock in the midst of their fold. Their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. You know what Samuel did when he walked up to uh, Saul who lied to him? And what's that beating the sheep? You know what you're going to hear in the millennium? You're going to hear the voice of Hebrew talking. And there's going to be so many Hebrews talking. That's all you're going to hear is Hebrews talking. And Jesus Christ seated on the throne of David. God sitting in heaven is going to say, I love that. And they're not going to cuss. And they're not going to have violence. And there's going to be no, no sin. There's not going to be any pornography. It's all going to be about Jesus Christ. And when they break into singing and celebration, it's going to be about the Son. And God will be pleased. The breaker has come up before them. They have broken up. Oh. And passed through the gate. And are going out by it. Babylon. Nineveh. Assyrians. The Greeks. The Romans. And their king shall pass before them. And the Lord on the head of them. See, if you sin, God's against you. But even still that, God called Nebuchadnezzar, go get Judah. Go get, go get uh, Jerusalem. They've sinned. But i got to go after Babylon because the Bible says, curse him that cursed you. You leave Israel alone. They're my people. And I will gather them up. They're going to be punished. Yes, they will be punished. But leave them alone. And I've said before and over and over, if you are a ruler of a nation and you're hearing this video and God calls upon you and say, Israel's been bad, go over there and whip them. Say, Lord God, Genesis 12 says you will curse them that curse them. You will curse those that curse them. Yes, it says that. You will bless them that bless you. Yes, it says that. And all the nations have been against your people. Yes. They're not doing so well. Yeah. Can you find somebody else to go against them? I want to pray for them. I want to do right by Israel. I want to do, because they're your people. I repent in ashes and sackcloth as Nineveh did with Jonah. I want to get right by you. And God will say, oh boy, okay. Woo. That centurion that came up, that sent servants to Jesus. Jesus started heading his way to his house. He sends his servants again. Listen, you ain't worthy coming to my house. 
You just speak the word. That king spoke the word in Jonah, and the nation got right, and God repented of what he was going to do to them. Any nation goes against Israel and says, no, we don't want to do it, Lord. You love them. They're your people. We acknowledge them as your people. Uh, we pass. God will bless you. God has blessed America not because of who she is, because of what she's done with Israel. Sending missionaries out to the entire world. That's what's keeping America strong today. The Bible that they're rejecting, the Bible that they won't allow in schools. You cut. You tell the church to cut it out. You tell the church to stop sending missionaries. You cut your aid and, and, and love to Israel, and God will cut your butt with an incurable disease. And you'll be a pain in the butt to God. God is not all done with Israel, but he will punish them. Like he will do with a Christian. You're his, but man, you do wrong. He says, as a father, I got to chastise you. Or else you'd be a bastard. If God don't correct Israel, they'd be bastards. They're not bastards. <gasps> my God, you said a bad word. Oh, you hear that preacher? Yeah, you don't know your Bible either. Go check out Hebrews. I get angry when people steal the blessings off God's people. There are people out there today that call themselves what I am. A Christian. And they have no idea what the Christian name is. As a matter of fact, they have killed Christians. In the name of Christianity, of course. And God will get your boat one day. God will get your name one day. Maybe that's why he's going to give me a new name. A new name written down in glory. 